control of my emotions. The others believe that. I don't. The Naked Time uh, was challenging. It was an episode where a, a virus was brought on board accidentally that was passed person to person by touch. If I had it and shook your hand, you got it. And what it did was eliminated people's defenses. So they started acting out their personal fantasies or secrets or whatever. Uh, Sulu became a swordsman, dashing around with his, with his saber and attacking people. In most of the episodes, I was just anchored there at the uh, console. And my lines were, you know, pretty much uh, pre-written for me and pre-memorized before he, the script even arrived. I, I, sir, warp three, you know. I mean, but with this script, Naked Time, I got unchained. Drunkenness without staggering and slurring. Uh, no, that was the essence of the story. If you think about it, that's what happened. Uh, people did goofy things, racing around like a drunk would do. <laughs> John Black, the writer who wrote that script, happened to be on the set, uh, oh, about a month before we, that uh, episode was shot. And he told me that he was uh, thinking of putting a, a samurai sword in my hand to terrorize the rest of the crew because of the virus that tore down our inhibitions. And I told him, well, that's uh, interesting. And it's certainly ethnically consistent because I'm of Japanese ancestry. But I told him, you know, I'm um, a Japanese-American. I grew up here, and I didn't play samurai when I was a kid. I uh, played Robin Hood, uh, so what about a fencing foil in uh, Sulu's hand? John said, well, that's a great idea. Do you fence? I said, of course. <laughs> it's my favorite hobby. <laughs> that night, I had the yellow pages open, and looking down fencing uh, schools. I found one on Hollywood Boulevard, the Falcon Studios, and that Saturday I was taking my first formal uh, fencing lesson. My life had come full circle, and I was able to bring that two weeks worth of uh, frenzied fencing lesson taking to that episode. I am in control of my emotions. <sighs> control of my emotions. The first draft of the script that came down, as I recall, had Spock, uh, elevator door opens, and out comes Spock, who's got the bug now, and Spock is crying. And a crewman, who's being kind of silly and painting graffiti on the walls in the, in the ship, has a paintbrush, dips in the paintbrush, and paints a mustache on the crying Spock. And Spock walks down the hall crying. I understood it, but I thought it was a lost opportunity. And this gentleman came on the set and said, OK, tell me again what you have in mind. I said, look, all you have to do is put me in a room by myself. Let me walk in a room, close the door behind me, because Spock would like some privacy when this is happening to him. And give me some words that have to do with science and emotion and mother and love. So he put some words down with just about pretty much what I just said. Mark Daniels, wonderful director, had devised a shot that was kind of complicated where the camera moved around me, kind of encircled me, and, and come up on the other side and see my face and the tears are streaming and I'm in this struggle. There wasn't time to do this more than once. Adjustments behind the camera creeping, watching, you know, and I could feel them out of the corner of my eye as I'm playing the scene. And uh, we got it done. When that show went on the air, my, my mail just went like that. It really uh, resonated with people. They really got it. They knew what, what it was all about. It was like they were let in on the secret of Spock's life. And they cared about it, and they responded to it. It was a tremendously important episode for Spock. <laughs>